everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, I was talking to a friend earlier today, and we were talking about just generally what was going on in our lives and what was going on in the world and, you know, how things go through their changes and how we go through the different cycles. And we were talking about, you know, if you looked at, if you looked at the world in, in a certain way, you would see all the incredible craziness going on, that there are wars here, that there are wars there, that suicide bombers seemingly every day somewhere, Peru, Palestine, Jerusalem, and, and that is true. That is part of what is happening on planet Earth at this point. And then we were saying that there's just so many incredible miracles of collaboration, uh, miracles of, of people coming together, to support love, to, to perpetuate cooperation between all sorts of people, to not seeing the, the differences and the separations between us all, but seeing the true connection between us all, to see the true miracle of, of each of our breaths every day, of the fact that we're on this planet, as I've said a zillion times before, the amazing miracle that we're hurtling through space at an enormous speed, on this incredibly magnificent ball that when you see it from space you go my god that's just an incredible jewel and and the miracle that we all can come together and even the miracle that we can all come together and not recognize how small we are and how vast we are at the same time how we are all one on this planet how we all are one to the root of whatever you call the root of, of life call it god call it truth and the amazement and the miracles that happen every day are something that we can really hook into. And tonight we have people with us whose lives are dedicated to the recognition and the perpetuation of that experience of the miracle, of the oneness, of the love, of the truth. Uh, we have with us Barbara Lamb. She's one of the world's leading crop circle researchers and educators. She's been studying crop circles for the last 10 or 15 years. She is a licensed marriage, family, and child uh, therapist. She specializes in hypnotic regression therapy for extraterrestrial contactees and abductees. Now, some of you out there are saying, what is that? How can that be? But so much we don't know. There's so much happening that we don't know. So there's an opportunity to, to be with someone who's, whose humbleness and, and truth will come through when we talk. So, I mean, it's a real opportunity for us, again, to whatever concepts we have, to really experience the miracle. The miracle on this planet and the miracle in this whole universe. And then we also have with us Shelley Flanders, who you've seen before. She's the operating director of the Bridging Heaven Earth Foundation, which produces this show, which is, you know, obviously intimately tied with the Bridging Heaven and Earth show. And she's going to discuss, you know, a lot of exciting new uh, developments that are going on with fundraisers and being on the internet and just tremendous things that are going on with uh, Bridging Heaven and Earth and the Foundation. And then we're also going to have a video that we've shown before that people have commented about that they really love. It's the Rainbow Gathering, the Rainbow People video called Bless the People. So it's another show where the miracle can manifest, where the miracle can grow, where that experience of the oneness, of dedicated to the oneness of that truth can once again vibrate stronger in all of us and then just spread and just ripple across this universe so as we normally do please join me in a short meditation then we're going to have Shelley and Barbara in the video and it's really an opportunity for us to come together again and we're just so delighted to be able to do this again so please join me in a meditation So we're joined on the set by Shelley. Welcome, Shelley. Hi there. How are you doing? So a lot of neat things are happening with the show and the foundation. Why don't you tell everybody? It's really neat. 
Well, we, we're planning our first fundraiser, we're calling it a fundraiser, and it's planned for June 15th uh, here in Santa Barbara at the Unitarian Society, uh, 1535 Santa Barbara Street. And the day, it will be a Saturday, the whole day is, is planned with just absolutely fun-filled activities. Uh, the first planned activity will be a workshop with Michael and Rafael Tamura, who are guests on yeah, our they, show. Yeah, people, are, they're incredible. Their workshop will start at 10 and go, and go till, uh, till, till 1 o'clock. Three-hour workshop. Uh, the name of the workshop will be uh, Spiritual Tools for Healing Yourself and Others. And we're really delighted to be working together with them. They're just yeah, and they've also made the, the generous offer that all the, all the, the proceeds from the workshop uh, will go to the Bridging Heaven Earth Foundation. I don't think they've ever done that before, so yeah, it's really they're a, really they're the, they're just absolutely supportive of what we're doing. Yeah, they're it's just, very beautiful. They're just wonderful. So that will be a three-hour workshop, and then we're planning after the workshop to have a luncheon that'll be catered by one of the best restaurants here in Santa Barbara called Fresco, and it will be a barbecue. So it will be an outdoor catered event. We're going to have just just wonderful food, uh, all sorts of barbecue fare with salmon and, and chicken and, and, and uh, quesadillas and all sorts of really delicious food. Corn? Are we having corn? I think there's corn. Isn't yeah, corn? I like corn. I think corn. corn. Yeah. And then... And desserts and somebody and else's... desserts. There's a, a, a wonderful selection of gourmet desserts that are donated. We'll have throughout the day. We're having gourmet teas that are going to be donated too that we'll have throughout the day with, with a very fine spring water or a yeah wonderful with spring water, water. What, what's the name of it? I can't remember, I can't remember. yeah but they're wonderful yeah people. that that will be donated as well as very special teas and waters and then hopefully are working together with a local winery which I won't mention because that's not solid yet to have wine also at, at the event and then we'll have a, a an auction a live auction which will which we've already started receiving uh, donations for we have a lot of art that's been been given to yeah, us we throughout. Have Peter Max I think we've shown yeah, on the show and uh, Carol Kleefeld and Andy Lakey and and Jerry Wenstrom who's going to be a guest in one of the future shows he just, just sent a painting this week yeah I really like that one we have a lot of really wonderful Really and, wonderful uh, art for the live Reagan. Auction. Reagan has an original yeah, piece in there. Fabulous piece by Reagan, uh, an original painting that she did when she was 17. And uh, Gail Rappaport, who's a local auctioneer and, and mediator, will, will be our very special auctioneer. And then we'll have a silent auction as well of all sorts of donations of workshops that our people are donating and, and, and guided meditations. And all. And There'll be tarot readings all day uh, with Janica. How about, uh, isn't there something, uh, isn't uh, Shaoli doing something with uh, swims swim, with dolphins yeah, and whales? Yeah, there's four swims with dolphins, four single swims with dolphins that have been donated uh, in, in, in Hawaii. And, uh, and then you know, tarot readings with Janica. And, uh, oh, Janica is also. Past Life Regression with Peter Clay Wright is being auctioned. And uh, we're still collecting in just a tremendous yeah, amount of things. There's been a great response to that. And all the books and tapes oh, and CDs of all, of, the, books, tapes, CDs of all the old tapes, CDs that are coming in. Like, but also we're having, how about all the musicians that are coming? Then we have, after, live the, after, the, after, the, after the work is done, and we have music from probably, the, the auction will be from 2 to 3, and then we'll have the music from 3.30 or 4 onward. And we have Suzanne Tang, we have Carlos Reynosa, we have Sidama, um, Kate Bennett, Salo uh, and uh, Salo and Mark yeah. will be here, and still we're, we're yeah, also a lot having of other, other other music. Actually, Cecilia well. said uh, she looks like she's moving, but if there's any way that she can be back, I know people will oh, love really? to see. She's moving to New York. She's moving she's to New York and the Yeah, she's going to try to be back. So it's going to be a, a just an amazing day. It's yes, going to be so be much fun. People. It really yeah. is. It's just going to be unbelievable. We're hoping to have at least a hundred people for the workshop in the morning. So that means that there just will be a, just a quantity of people. A lot of the past guests are going to come right. just to be with us. You know? 
So it, it will be. Yeah, very it's a real exciting. chance for us all to be together and have fun and collaborate, it's really which is wonderful. really what we want to do. Yeah, it really will be nice. And uh, we do want to mention that we have uh, art on the wall at Fresco. That's uh, a percentage of uh, the sale of that art goes to the Bridging Heaven and Earth Foundation. And that also people have donated. And people have donated art uh, right. for that. And then also, isn't it up in... And uh, we have art also in uh, the um, Jasmine store at uh, 4, I think it's 433 Alisal Road in Solvang. We have art there as well that people need to go and take a look at because it's lovely art and it benefits uh, the Bridging Heaven and Earth Foundation. And we did want to talk about the fact that we have most of the shows um, in audio version on the internet. Yeah, this uh, Success Talk, uh, it's a, the, I guess it's the largest empowerment station, uh, you know, on the internet, on radio, and they have probably a hundred shows now, and they're going to probably have uh, all the shows, this is the 135th show, so we're going to have all the shows available, so anyone in the world with an internet hookup will be able to listen to all the interviews and all the songs, you know, within hopefully a couple of weeks. And, what, and what's that web address? Uh, I don't know. I think they can call. I think it's, uh, I don't know, but yeah. I mean, you know, if anybody wants any information about anything about Barbara's book, about anything like that, about, you know, anything Shelley's talked about, you can call me at Alan, 805-687-2053, 805-687-2053. I'll give you information about Barbara, which I'm sure you'll be interested in when you hear her and the the information about the crop circles. And sign up the, for the workshop too. Yeah, people we want interest. To take, because you know, people need to do that. Yeah, people want information on the workshop or Michael and Raphael. You know, you can go to our website, which is you know put on the screen, and there's a link to Michael's and Raphael's uh, uh, website. So I think what we'll do now. I mean, it was really good that Shelley got a chance to come on and talk about you know all the really fantastic things that are happening. But I think now we'll show a video called "Bless the People." Uh, the words and lyrics about uh, by wind song. This is the rainbow gathering that they have, I think, every year at different places, and it's just an extraordinary, basically, explosion of people coming together, collaborating in love and in dedication to the truth and dedication to the oneness. And if you listen to the words to this, you know, bless the people and bless all the people. So.
Hi, welcome. We're on the set with Barbara. But I wanted to tell everybody uh, that I mean, Shelley and I were talking. I'm sure most of you know, but the Bridging Heaven Earth Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit educational tax exempt. So, I mean, we're talking about it that way, but it's definitely a 501c3 uh, educational organization. So, as you can tell from the show, so welcome, Barbara. It's great to have you here. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. So, as yeah. I said in the introduction, uh, you're one of the foremost experts on crop circles. Now, I know a lot of people are, you know, interested in just amazed by the whole process. What got you, you know, how did you get started in being amazed by it? <laughs> in 1990, I just happened to be at a large forum, a Whole Life Expo, and I saw the uh, notice for a lecture that was coming up about crop circles in England. 1990 that was, and I had never heard of crop circles yet at that point. But there was something that just fired up inside of me, and I thought, oh, wow, maybe we're being communicated with by some other kinds of beings or consciousness. So I rushed to that lecture and became completely enamored in these wonderful patterns that were just happening mysteriously overnight in the fields in England. And, 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 and did they happen, uh, did it start in, in the 80s or 90s or does it go back you know, through recorded history. What is the... Well, 1980 is the first time that um, crop circles began to be noticed in newspapers and magazines. But there have been reports of simple crop circles all through the 1900s and even the 1800s and the 1600s. And perhaps, for all we know, they go back even further than that. So, so in the 1980s, all of a sudden in these fields, and mostly in England for some reason. Yes, most of them are in England. At least the most beautiful and numerous and complex crop circles are in England. But it is a worldwide phenomenon. Why do you think it's in England? Is it some stiff upper lip thing? <laughs> is there some weirdness <laughs> going on? The aliens are trying to loosen the lips that are... What would it no, be? I, I think uh, we, we can guess. All okay, right, we can only it. guess. Right. One of them is that England is a very cosmopolitan place. When you really think about it, that millions of people every year travel through England, at least through the airports, on their way to getting to other countries. Also, England has a lot of ancient sacred sites and special energies in the earth at those points where the sacred See, it's sites are. It's almost like acupuncture points for the earth. Yes, exactly. But you think they'd be so focused in, in that particular? It's just interesting to me how it, you know, it wouldn't mm. show up in Missouri. I mean, I don't know well, why they anything do. would show up in Missouri, yeah. but... <laughs> they actually do. They do on. show up in yes. Missouri. Oh, they, yes. God. I... They, they do happen in the U.S. too, in the large grain-growing yeah. states. So Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Nebraska, Montana, uh, Washington State, Oregon State, and some of the states on the eastern seaboard even. Uh, so, so they do happen. Mm -hmm. But in England, they seem to have these um, energized places. Those, as you said, the sort of acupuncture energy line system mm -hmm. um, is in the earth, all over the earth. But in England, they seem to be activated by ancient people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the churches and the ancient sites have been placed on these energy points. And crop circles tend to happen near those in the fields. Also, um, a very important factor, I think, is that England has so much rainfall that there's a lot of moisture under the soil. And that seems to be helpful for the making of crop circles. Hmm. Because in the making of a, a what we call a genuine crop circle, that is by the anomalous source, Rather it's than very two dopey difficult. farmers pulling a board. Or right, <laughs> yes. No, I, I like to emphasize the, the mysterious phenomenon, the right. genuine phenomenon, right. which is very difficult to pin down and say exactly what that intelligence or that consciousness mm -hmm. is. But in any event, when crop circles are made, a very high intense heat is applied to the, the crop and to the soil at that point. And it seems as if this heat can somehow draw up the moisture from under the soil, and then it creates a steam effect. And that's why the plants can uh, bend over without breaking and can be pliable and enough. And without burning. Right, without burning or charring or wow. any kind of damage whatsoever. In fact, these um, the crop circles or the, the grains of the crop that are laid down 
um, are continuing to grow and ripen and come to full maturity. Do, the, do they, at, at any point after the initial crop circle is formed, do they go back up or do they stay there for the next? Well, if it's a very new young green crop, which could happen in April or May or even early June, those young green plants tend to do the heliotropic effect. That is, they tend to try to rise up a bit uh, toward the sun, but, but they don't come all the way back up again. Uh -huh. But the later crops, like in late June and July and August, uh, those are drier plants generally. Mm -hmm. And when they're laid down in a crop circle, they stay down and they grow parallel to the ground. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. so what do you make of it? I mean, you've, you're like the <laughs> foremost expert. What do you make of the whole thing? Well, I've been there in England for 11 consecutive summers now, and I'm going back again, of course, this year too. And um, I think, I feel very convinced, in fact, that, that the crop circles are a fantastic gift, and they're given to us by some other source. I would say a higher source than we are. And I think that this source is from other planets perhaps or maybe even other dimensions of reality these days it seems that even physicists are talking about other dimensions of reality and it certainly does seem as if these are coming from perhaps interdimensional beings or they could be other physical beings from elsewhere in the cosmos so you don't have a specific that they're you know pleiades or no specific uh, doer of this of the crop circles. Well, I will defer at the moment to my co-author of this book, Crop Circles Revealed, <laughs> Judith Moore, and Judy has done wonderful channeling material. She's brought through extraordinary uh, transmissions of information, and the source of that channeling is a thirteenth-dimensional being named Leolin. And Leolin is actually a multi-dimensional being, but she resides on an Arcturian mothership, a very huge spacecraft way out there in space. And she says that on that spacecraft, they have the technology to lay down the crop circle patterns here on Earth. And there are about five or six different races of beings from other planets um, who are helping to make these crop circles with this being named Leolin. Mm. So that means that we're talking about interdimensional beings and also physical beings who from afar with their particular technology that we don't have, I suppose, mm -hmm. uh, that they are laying down these beautiful patterns. And not only that, but there's a point to it. There's a very important point. And that is, according to this information, that each crop circle has its own sound and light frequency, its own pattern, its own geometry. In fact, each crop circle has its own particular geometric code. And the code of each crop circle is for change, change here on Earth, for healing of the Earth, for raising the consciousness of human beings, and I do believe we could use some consciousness raising, <laughs> considering all that's going on in the world of a negative that. nature. And so. to help us to, um, as an Earth and as a humanity, to actually rise up into another dimension of reality, a higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. So part of the point of the crop circles is to give us these codes or these patterns for these changes. And a very exciting part of this to me is that when each one of us looks at a picture of a crop circle, um, there's something about the irises of our eyes and the DNA that we have interacting with the DNA of the crop circle. So that as we look at a crop circle picture, we're helping to activate that code for which the crop mm. circle symbolizes to bring about that particular kind of change. Mm. So an interesting part of this, I think, is that out there in space, there are millions of beings who are actually very aware of Earth and that we really need some help. And they can't come and make the help for us. They can't make the changes directly for us, but they can interact with us so that we can make the changes. 
and that's why they give these crop circles. So the crop circles are really an awakener, a wake-up call, that they get us to look at them because they're so remarkable. And millions of people now in the earth are looking at these crop circle pictures. And even if people are wondering, what on earth is this? And why are they here? What is this all about? At least they're looking at them and they're thinking, well, maybe these come from somewhere else. Maybe there's something else to reality beyond us. Yeah, it just, us. Yeah, it just yeah. bursts our knowing. Yes, and Which, so it's a very right. interactive thing. Right. So those of us who have been fortunate enough to get to England and to go into the crop circles, we're interacting with them too. Now, yeah. now, when you go to England and you go to a crop circle, I mean, do you walk in the field? Do you walk in the in the flattened zone? And yes. if and you do, do you do you feel a healing right there? Well, that's a good question. Yes, um, when you go into a crop circle, it's usually way out in the middle of a big field, a big field of wheat or barley or uh, rye or oats or oilseed canola. Those are the most popular ones. And you, you walk a long time, sometimes a quarter of a mile or half a mile through the field on the tractor tracks. And you, it's just a very nice sensation. You're walking through a beautiful crop field. And, and the rest yeah. of it's ab almost above your head a lot of it, so you'll yes, walk well, in. It depends on which yeah, uh, right. time of the season. If, right. if it's early in the season in May, the crop might be, oh, two feet high. And as you get into June, the crop will have grown to maybe three feet or three and a half or four feet. And by July, they're four and a half feet or so, maybe five feet. And by August, they might be even taller than that. Right. So it depends on when right. you go in. Mm -hmm. So that's a very nice feeling in itself. but. It's even better when you get just a foot or so outside of the laid down crop circle. Um, you begin to feel an energy. And instrumentation will register that energy too. Uh, for instance, I always go in with my dowsing rods. And the dowsing rods stay absolutely parallel as I'm walking through the tractor tracks. But then as soon as I get either to the crop circle or even a foot outside of the crop circle, those dowsing rods just by themselves open up. And I think that's because there's a different energy there mm. that's, that's actually moving the dowsing rods. And then as I go further into the crop circle, and particularly toward the center of the crop circle, where there might be a swirl at the center, then the dowsing rods really open up all the way. Wow. And sometimes they come all the way around and hit me in the back. Because, really? Because the energy seems to be so intense. Wow. And this is very different than anywhere else in the field. This energy is intense only right, right inside in the, the crop circle. Wow. So people go in with other instruments too. They go in with compasses sometimes, and the compasses will twirl around like absolute mad, and then they'll settle on a point off of due north. Mm -hmm. Compasses will usually point I mean, to but north. Do you find yourself like with, or, or have heard stories of physical healings or epiphanies, spiritual epiphanies? Oh, and yes, that? yes. As many people have quite remarkable experiences inside crop circles, and particularly if they'll sit down or lie down on the earth in the crop circle, they really feel the energy. Mm. Many people get attracted to sitting right in the center of a crop circle because they can actually feel with their hands and their bodies that there's more intense energy there. And some people have actually been healed mm. by the crop circle energy. Now, on the other hand, um, the energies are strong and they don't always agree with every single person. Now, we all have a different chemistry and different physical components. So some people inside of a particular crop circle will suddenly feel, ah, exhausted and um, aching and tired, maybe even depressed, and maybe even a bit nauseous or sick. Whereas another person in the same crop circle at the same time might feel really enhanced and uplifted and mm -hmm. exhilarated mm -hmm. and happy. So it depends a bit on your own chemical system or your own physical condition mm -hmm. at the time. But there is a wonderful Tai Chi Qigong master, Dr. Nan Lu, who runs a traditional Chinese medicine school in New York City. And he goes to the crop circles with his students every year.
And he has determined, because he's so tuned in to the energies of crop circles, he has determined that each crop circle has its own particular kind of energy that is good for healing particular conditions in the human body. Mm. So one crop circle, for instance, would be great for respiratory problems. Another crop circle has the energies that are healing for kidney problems. Another one for stomach problems, mm -hmm. or another one for circulation problems, for instance. And your information is that they're all either, benign isn't the right word, but they're all of benefit. There's n Yes, I, I think they are. real yes. ones are of benefit. Right, yes. Uh -huh. uh, they're benefit to people and, and uh, benefit to humankind. And now, because of Judy Moore's channeling and Crop Circles Revealed, we have a very good sense of what the intention is. And the particular change, as I said, that these Crop Circles are here to help us to activate. There's a very interactive effect going on here too mm -hmm. with the crop circles and that simply means that it frequently happens that a person or perhaps a group of people will think of a design or a pattern that they would like to have happen as a crop circle and if they'll really think about that intensely or even just ask for that in their minds or ask for it out loud or meditate upon it then what seems to happen miraculously is later that night, usually that very night, that pattern will mysteriously appear in the field. In the field where circle. they are, in the field where they've meditated, where they've prayed. Well, sometimes they've meditated in that particular field or nearby. Mm. Uh, usually will happen within several miles of where the people have thought about this and, pattern. And once this pattern is 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 finalized and is there. I mean, is it there like forever? Well, I or wish I it... could say that it were, <laughs> but the thing is that these, of course, are done in fields of growing crops. And then at the end of the season, which is usually sometime in August, usually by late August, the fields are harvested by the farmers. So he doesn't, yeah. or he or she doesn't leave a space in the crop circle. Would it remain? I mean, if, you know, Somebody built a fence around it. Well, actually, the crop circle itself does remain, but because the surrounding crop is harvested and cut down, uh, like a butch haircut, it's like a stubble of the crop left. And so even though the crop circle, which has been laid down parallel to the earth, is still there, and the energy is still there, it's just not as visible because I you see. don't have and the contrast different. of the standing crop. Right. But people have researched from so many different points of view about the crop circles and some people have determined that the energy from a crop circle made in one year will last in that same place in the same field for as long as six subsequent years. So yeah, that, I mean you wouldn't even, there'd be no like physical reason why it wouldn't just stay indefinitely in a way. Well, it does actually stay, but then the thing is that after harvesting, eventually the earth is completely tilled and turned over, and then of course the well, new crop is planted. Well, it depends how deep it goes. I mean, yeah. yeah it's like well, anything else. And yeah. that's a good point because um, right. so physicists have determined that the crop circle probably goes down, or that is the energy of a crop circle goes down about 60 feet down into the ground and about 60 feet and up above. And these have been tested. I mean, it's been tested yes. with people sticking instruments in the ground. and. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, and people so. go in with a lot of different instrumentation. Mm -hmm. uh, the scientific types do, and we're grateful to them. Right. And they go in with electrostatic voltmeters and magnetometers wow. and lots of different scientific instrumentation, and you, microwave you brought detectors. To the, you brought to the set some interesting pictures of some of the... Oh yes, we should show the pictures. Yeah, we should show because they're so yes. amazing that they happen and, and if people think that there's, you know, a dopey farmer with his, you know, friend doing it, I'd like to I see know. him do these things. Well, I will say too, right away, that of course people hear a lot about the hoaxers. Right. Because there are some young men who do go out and make crop circles, but they are not the ones that have all the energies. Right. They are not the ones that have the biophysical changes. The genuine ones that we've been talking about have 15 different biophysical changes that happen in the plants. 
whereas the man-made crop circles have no changes except that they crack yeah, and bend in half. and yeah, they, right. they die right. yeah and are there less to less so i'm going to start yeah, identifying a picture yeah. over here and um this is a picture of what we call yeah, the barbary it, castle crop circle uh -huh. in 1991. now so this was one of the first ones you saw in person yes uh -huh. yes my first year of actually being in crop circles was this same year 1991. Before that, uh, leading up through the 1980s, crop circles had been simple circles, which were impressive too, or a circle with a ring swirled in the opposite direction, or a circle um, swirled with maybe two or three rings. And then in the 1980s, they also had uh, what we would call a dice formation, the a quintuplet, you know, five, like the dice, uh, five figure. And then in 1991, or 1990, they started having longer pictograms that were, oh, maybe 800 feet long or 900 feet long with different design elements. Then in 1991... Why do you think they were consistently getting more complex? Because we were able to take more in, because there was more information needed? I mean, what, what is your theory on that? It seems like the more that more people paid attention to crop circles, the more the genuine crop circle makers, makers gave us more intricate, interesting patterns. So by this time in 1991, when this beautiful Barbary Castle um, figure happened, um, this was so geometrically wonderful. Marcia? The Barbary Castle crop circle Oh, that figure. one there. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, good. And, um, as you can see, there were circles and rings and appendages and uh, triangles, I don't think that shows terribly well in there, but it's a beautiful geometric pattern. And many people have recognized this as a modern day version of an ancient alchemical pattern that happened hundreds of years ago. Some people also think that this pattern represents free energy devices, mm. that the whole world, for instance, could be a gyroscope and that as we circle around, as we rotate, we could be gathering the free energy that's in the air around us, and we could get all the electrical power that we would ever need on the Earth if we would just harness it in that way. So I'm going to go on to another picture now. These may be a little bit out of uh, uh, numerical order or according to years, but I'm focusing on this one now, uh, which was happening in 1994. Mm -hmm. 1994 was a really extraordinary year because that is when the Shoemaker-Levy comet hurtled across the sky mm. and actually collided with Jupiter. Mm. And there was a whole series of crop circles that summer, mm -hmm. 1994, and it began with one just before this, and then this one, which seems to be a harbinger, like an, an advance notice, of that shoemaker Levy comet, which was heading toward Jupiter. And this particular crop circle that you can see flying across a hillside, it was really dramatic and hundreds of feet long, probably about 900 feet long. And the tail of this crop circle um, has 21 circles, which coincided completely with the shoemaker Levy comet, which had 21 pieces, one following the other, as it was heading toward Jupiter. Wow. There were actually 21 strikes of the comet on Jupiter. So this one is showing that that is going to happen. And then there was a series of other crop circles similar to this, but each one that same summer having one fewer crop circle. In other words, as each piece of the Shoemaker-Levy comet actually hit Jupiter, on that very same day or night, another crop circle would appear with one fewer crop circle left in its tail until all the pieces of Shoemaker-Levy had hit Jupiter. And at that point, the series of crop circles in that particular theme stopped. So the, everything is way too precise and way too uh, 
efficient to be anything but a superior intelligence doing it. I would certainly think so, yes. And, and those of us who are really involved in this respect that intelligence so much. And, and when we're in crop circles, we often feel a sense of presence. You know, we don't see any other being there, other than maybe a few other human beings, but we feel a sense of benevolent presence. And many of us have a And there's no clairvoyance have been in there and seen or experienced particularly, or, or is this the channeling of, of your co-writer? Is that as well, close as people have come to a particular experience of the, the author of the crop circle? Well, there are some clairvoyants, yes. Um, Isabel Kingston is one of them, for instance, who have uh, brought through information too, clairvoyantly, about other beings in the universe having given us these beautiful crop circles. That seems to be quite a consistent theme by other people who channel or who do have that clairvoyant ability. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it is quite recognized that there is some higher and superior intelligence that makes the crop circles. Let's go on to another picture now. In 1996, in this picture, uh, there was a crop circle at a place called Oliver's Castle. And uh, this was a very controversial one because there was a young man who was uh, camping up on the tree, um, up on the hill by a tree, um, the night that this crop circle was made. And at dawn, he woke up, something woke him up, he didn't know what, and he grabbed his video camera and pointed it down the hill at this wheat field and he could see, for about seven seconds, he could see two white balls of light, looking very much like those uh, crop circle balls that you see right there. But these were flying white balls of light that came over the field and circled around and seemed to be laying down the crop circles in this pattern. And it, yeah. did it look like a, a, a ship, is a spaceship as we would know it, or did it look just like no. light coming from the cosmos? No, there? no, it looked like balls, balls, like two spheres of white light, glowing spheres that came flying low over the field. And as they were kind of circling around on the field, you could actually see in this videotape that the crop circle was being laid down into this beautiful pattern. So after the first set came, then the second set came, two white balls again from a slightly different direction, and completed the pattern, or at least that's what it looks like. Now, of course, whenever there's anything anomalous and mysterious like this, there are always people who are going to say, oh, it must have been a hoax. Right. Or the but, government or a... Yeah, it was faked right, in some the way. The Air Force is doing... Yes, that's one of the theories. But this film, um, this video footage was analyzed by a number of different film studios and special effects studios, and all of them that I've ever heard of had said, no, this could not have been faked, especially in the short amount of time since the young man took the video and then a very few hours later, about five hours later, gave it to some of the crop circle researchers in England. Would you say that there, that these crop circles are giving us a code that would be good if we cracked or just vibrationally they're changing us so we're not so stupid and separate mm -hmm. and I mean is, is there something mm -hmm. that we're supposed to kind of like figure out or is it more mm -hmm. vibrational that we're changing whether we want to or not kind of? Well it's not so much I think that we're supposed to figure this out but just by looking at the pictures like you're all doing right now um, that there's something again about our own geometric code that we have and our own DNA that activates the code of that particular crop circle. So it's not with our head that we're figuring something out. It's, no. It's on another yeah. level because That's our head right. will do all its things. Oh, yes. And we do. I mean, people have analyzed these patterns over and over again. But the main thing is to just look at them and appreciate them, put put our own energy into them, even if we're just looking at pictures of them, because that helps to bring about the change that that particular crop circle represents. So let's go on to other ones now, too. In 1996 also, there was this beautiful example of fractal geometry that started to happen. 
And this particular crop circle picture that we're looking at is a Julia set. That is a wonderful example of fractal geometry. And this particular pattern... What does fractal geometry mean? Fractal means it's sort of the way that everything grows and unfurls. The root, the root geometry, kind of. Yes. Or the base or the root. Or the right, and it's not only the root of geometry, but the root of everything. The right. way plants and leaves and human beings, the human cell, replicates and, and duplicates and multiplies. And uh, shells or fish or shellfish or anything, um, that any living matter sort of unfolds cell by cell in this particular way. So this is very highly advanced mathematics and geometry. And it's a beautiful pattern of many, 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 many circles. I spent a lot of time in this crop circle and every single circle in this pattern was swirled in a slightly different way. Even the little side circles that radiate off the main pattern. This had a beautiful energy. And this particular pattern was in the field <coughs> across from Stonehenge. Wow. And it was right off a very busy highway where many, many people compute, uh, commute every day to London and back. And this was one of the few crop circles that was actually made during the daytime, late in the afternoon in a one half hour period. And nobody saw it being made. It just suddenly was there. And that raises a very so, interesting point. And, and the point. owner of the land, what, what the hell happened oh, here? Yeah, well, the what farmer, the he, he didn't know how it got there or why, but he was a very smart guy, and he realized started that... Started charging people. He them. did. He did, yeah. God, I love you for something. <laughs> this well, looks like a way to make a few dollars. Well, he made, he made about 13,000 pounds, which would be about uh, $16,000 um, in our currency, um, and which is very helpful for a farmer to do no, that absolutely. because he absolutely, I just yeah, <laughs> but he cannot harvest the laid down part of the crop in a crop circle uh, because it just doesn't uh, comply to the way that the harvester machine work so so they basically lose that crop so if they can make up something for right. charging visitors that's <laughs> fine so anyway we were just extraordinarily impressed with that particular crop circle and now there's another one over here um, that followed on a couple of weeks after the Julia set was this one which we call the triple Julia it would be wonderful if that could be uh, shown in the camera as well yeah I think that yeah there yes, it is. thank yeah. you yeah and this is three of those Julia sets swirled in the opposite direction. Now this pattern is made up of hundreds of circles. And it was an absolutely extraordinary formation. This too is, of course, fractal geometry, even more complex than the Julia set. And again, each crop circle within this big pattern um, was swirled in a different way and had a different kind of center. In fact, one was of the, there? Did you find that when you went from like circle to circle, that there was a different energy? That you felt yes. a different energy and you felt a different vibration? Yes, that was one of the exciting things about wow. this. And dowsing rods and pendulums and electric static voltmeters and uh, various equipment, they all showed a different reading of the energy in each one of these circles within this and pattern. And do they correlate to anything that humans are scientifically attuned to that, you know, radiation? Of, is there anything that we can say that, that we use, that humans use this vibration for something, for some purpose, and to see, like, you know, to use the mind to kind of put the whole thing mm. together? Well, that's kind of a complex question, but <laughs> I don't know how much time left, so. but um, but we do notice that there is microwave energy in a lot of these crop circles. Mm. That that's one of the components. I think I'm not exactly answering your question, right. but but people might want to know what is this energy. So the uh, people, the biophysicists, and people who have tested thousands and thousands and thousands of these plants have concluded that the force that actually lays down a crop circle is a very complex energy, a complex vortex of energy, sometimes even leaving radiation effects, wow. sometimes leaving microwave effects, uh, sometimes other kind of energetic effects.
But again, um, back to your question a bit ago about healing, uh, the energies can be used to really help to heal people of physical maladies. Wow. So let's go on to another pattern now. Okay. Um, in 1999, we had this beautiful pattern uh, at a place called Beckhampton. And there was a group of Japanese people who came over and they um, wanted to fee see some kind of pattern that was welcoming them from Japan. They were very serious researchers and scientists. So they sat up on a hillside about a mile away from this field one afternoon and they closed their eyes and they meditated and asked for a pattern that would be a Japanese pattern of some sort, would rep represent the Japanese culture. And then during the darkness of that night, this particular pattern appeared, appeared and it looks very much like Japanese origami. Wow. Or other people think it looks like a Celtic knot. Mm -hmm. But this was a beautiful crop circle. And you can see the glossiness now. In looking at any of these pictures, the darker part is when you're looking down from an airplane or a helicopter and you're looking at the, the heads of the crop sticking up toward the sky. And the lighter part is where the crop has been laid down. And that's the stalks, which are a lighter color. That's, that's why you can see the contrast so well. And, and you've written a book uh, with your, your partner on Crop Circles Revealed. And, yes. And people are just enormously just drawn to it and to find out about, you know, all your research. And, and would you say that the response has been more than you expected and, and that so many people are interested in, in Crop Circles? And well, it's, it's very gratifying. And I, I get such wonderful feedback about this book. And, uh, and people love the cover. Douglas Taylor did That's a beautiful, beautiful cover of these talking about symbols. Just, have we gotten the yeah. cover yet to show everybody? Yeah, we have. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have. yeah uh, the symbols flowing down from a source of light up above. We also have um, the crop glyphs, little designs that were given to us too, as the channeling was given to yeah, Judy I Moore. Know. And um, so in the book, we have 67 different crop circles that were wow. channeled for by Judy Moore. And each time she channeled a drawing, which we call a star glyph, coming from our star we only got We only got a few yeah. minutes left, so let me just tell everybody, if you want any information on the book about crop circles, seminars, anything to do with the foundation, 805-687-2053, 805-687-2053. Good night. God bless you. We love you. Thanks for coming.